Mipmaps, which were mentioned in earlier videos, are pre-calculated smaller versions of an image, and they're progressively smaller versions. So Wikipedia actually has a pretty good example of this um, satellite in smaller and smaller versions. And when we create mipmaps from our original image, we increase somewhat the total size of the image in memory, but the exchange is that we have these pre-generated downsampled images, and because we're generating them beforehand versus trying to downsample on the fly, while we're rendering, while our game is running, we can do a bunch of things to make them look nicer. So after we shrink the image, for instance, we can anti-alias it. Uh, and when we shrink, we can also apply things like bicubic sampling for our reduction. So we get nice, crisp, downsampled images. And bicubic sampling, if you've played with like Photoshop or GIMP, you may be familiar with it, or you may not. Now, once we have these smaller images, we can swap them out with the larger image on the GPU when we render. So why do we want to go to all this trouble? Well, as we get further and further away from the camera, our object occupies fewer and fewer pixels on screen. So we just don't need the whole giant image anymore. And if we can use a smaller image, that means we use less memory and that we can render faster. And it also means that our computer has to do less work overall, which is great, especially on mobile devices, because doing more work eats up the battery more quickly. So if we can do less work, we can make the battery last longer. So going back over to Unity, Mipmaps affect a few important import settings, and the major ones are filter mode and NISO level. We've seen these in previous videos. With filter mode, what we've taken a look at is the difference between bilinear and point filtering, which is the difference between looking at individual pixels or blending between adjacent pixels, so essentially doing a bit of a blur when we get close. The other option is trilinear, and trilinear filtering actually goes between multiple levels of our mipmap. So between different sizes of the mipmap. And the reason that we might want to use trilinear filtering is that as we're zooming in and out from a, an image, it's going to swap out from a higher uh, resolution to a lower resolution image, and then it's going to swap out to the next lower. And sometimes, in some circumstances, you can see a bit of a pop. And that's because the lower resolution image um, doesn't have quite, it, it's not quite a perfect downsampling. There's some difference that you can see. This is going to be very rare, but there are cases when it helps to be able to use trilinear filtering, when you see that pop as you go from a higher resolution to a lower resolution mip map. Um, and this is especially going to happen where you have um, sort of a lot of very high contrast detail. Um, so for instance, if you think about the night lights around the earth, as you were to zoom away from that, um, where you have dots in the countryside, you can see almost a, a shimmer when those disappear. Um, the reason we don't use this normally is that it takes more calculations. Um, it sort of defeats part of the point of mipmaps, which are to make things easier on your computer. So we only use it when we need to. Re with regards to anISO level, we saw previously that if we take anISO level down to zero, um, as we get further and further away, and actually what's happening here is as we look flatter and flatter along the image, if we think of our eyes being in the center here, we're looking pretty much straight on here, whereas we're looking down closer. So as we look flatter and flatter relative to our image, we're going to see that it blurs. And again, that's because it's um, trying to actually sample just the straight up image, not doing a very good job. As we pull in an ISO, it's actually going to be bringing the uh, mip maps into play, and it's actually going to be using that pre-calculation that we do had done to better calculate lower resolution versions that we can use when we're looking at a steep angle. So it also comes into play there. Both filter mode and ISO level use these mip maps that we create. And they're used a few other places, but that's the general idea of them, is that as we get further and further away from an object, we swap to lower and lower resolution versions of the same image, and that we calculate all of those lower resolution versions. And by the way, each one is half as big as the previous one. And we do all of that as a pre-calculation step beforehand.